Hello, dear viewers. This is your favorite storyteller, Jason, and it's time for another tale here, sorry what? Ready to dive in? Well, grab your favorite drink, get comfortable, and let us begin. It's a few days before Christmas as I wait in the arrival lounge at Manchester Airport, here in New Hampshire. I watched on as other families and loved ones greeted each other as they came into the lounge from their short flight from Boston. I'm waiting for my wife, Dr. Emily Walker, to return home to me. Emily's been working in Puerto Rico for the last six months, and I haven't seen her for about a month, since Thanksgiving. My name is John Walker, my friends and work colleagues call me Johnny, for obvious reasons. I'm the same age as my wife at 27, but where she's a doctor, I became an engineer, working in town here in Manchester. I'm six feet tall with dark brown hair and brown eyes. Emily and I were high school sweethearts, we were both each other's first love, and first lovers. We both then went to college together, however, I finished earlier as Emily was still studying to be a doctor. We got married shortly after I graduated, almost two years ago now, and we've been renting a nice three-bedroom house in the northern part of Manchester for a few years as well. Emily's first job after completing medical school was to work with an NGO, non-government organization, Doctors Without Boundaries. They provide 6 or 12 month contracts for doctors to work in third world or struggling countries where medical assistance is at a premium. Many young doctors like Emily take up the opportunity to gain experience, also working in humanitarian aid always looks really good on a resume. Emily is halfway through her 12 month contract, first leaving for Puerto Rico back last summer. It's hard having a long distance relationship, we've been so close and done everything together since we were just 16. These periods in between her trips home are easily the longest I've gone without her in over 10 years now. I miss her so much. As I look past the other passengers, I could see the wavy blonde hair of an attractive woman, it's my Emily. She stands a 5'7 tall, with long wavy blonde hair and beautiful blue eyes. Emily also sports a knockout body, she's lean and fit, which makes her large bread stand out even more. I'm used to guys checking her out ever since her breads first blossomed in high school, it's just something I've learned to deal with. Her smile grew as she saw me waiting for her, approaching me with arms out to embrace and kiss me once more. Hi darling, it's so good to see you, Emily said as we embraced and then kissed on the lips. Hi to you too gorgeous, you're looking even better than a month ago, you've been working on that tan again, haven't you? You look amazing. I replied. Thanks, I try to catch some sun every day when I can. There's not much else to do there apart from working. Emily responded as we made our way to the luggage collection. We spend the next hour or so catching up on everything Emily's missed out on over the last month, although I'm not that good at the gossiping side of things. She didn't have much to tell me about her job, just that it was business as usual from the last time she was home. While Emily was in the kitchen calling her mom, I helped by taking her suitcase upstairs to her bedroom, unzipping and opening it, so she could begin to unpack when she was ready. A piece of clothing on one side of the suitcase caught my eye after opening the lid. I pulled it out to look at it, it's a sheer red teddy, a very sexy little teddy indeed. I've never seen her wearing this before, maybe she bought it to surprise me as it looks like it's brand new, so I packed it back away where I'd found it and closed the top of the suitcase. After we had dinner that night, I was looking forward to having sex with Emily once again, it's only been a month, but even that's way too long. I was half expecting her to come to bed in her sheer red teddy I'd seen earlier, but she came out of the bathroom in just a long t-shirt instead. Maybe she's saving it for a special occasion. The sex was good, although nowhere near as good as what I'd imagined in my head thinking about it for the last four weeks. It was more like when you have sex every night, and this was just one of those nights. Not the passionate twist of two lovers reconnecting after missing each other for a month. But she's probably tired after her three connecting flights to get home, and I've got five days with her now for us to enjoy ourselves. We spent Christmas Day at my parents' house, as Emily's parents had moved to Florida a few years ago. On day 3 of Emily's visit, I was still feeling that something was missing, that spark we usually have. I remembered back to Thanksgiving, and I'd have to say those two nights that Emily was home, weren't the greatest either. I put that down to her being tired from the traveling as well, she also told me that she'd been working her butt off too, that she needed some well-earned rest while she was here. But what about now? She doesn't seem tired or worn out now, yet the spark and enthusiasm is simply not there like it was before she left in the summer. Maybe I'm just imagining things, maybe I'm remembering how we used to make love as being better than it actually was. But I don't think so. As her final day rolled around and then the night, I was still waiting for her to bring out the new sexy red teddy I'd seen in her suitcase, if there was a night for it, it's tonight. Emily flies out in the morning, so tonight is our last night together until she returns for a weekend at the end of February, before spending a week here at Easter. I was disappointed when she again came into the bedroom wearing just a large t-shirt, one of my old ones. 
I was tempted to ask her about the red teddy, but didn't. I was now more focused on giving her the good loving she deserves. After taking Emily to the airport in the morning and saying our farewells, I watched as her plane lifted into the sky to take her away from me again. These are the days that suck the most, with the long countdown until she returns starting all over again. But that wasn't all that was eating at me, I'd never felt more disconnected from Emily than I've felt during these holidays. It's like we were just going through the motions, even though I've been doing everything I could to make her trip memorable. I didn't get the sense that Emily was trying anywhere near as hard as I've been, and now I'm finding it hard to shake that feeling. Is it her job? Is it me? Has she found that with traveling and meeting new people, that she now wishes that she wasn't married? Is she getting tired with our marriage or am I just seeing things that aren't there? I shook my head as I made my way back to my truck, I had to get to work. On my drive to work I couldn't help but dwell on my thoughts further. When Emily first left for Puerto Rico last summer, she would call me every day, sometimes twice. We would have sexy video calls every few days when she was alone in the apartment that she is staying in with another of her colleagues. But even those have been non-existent since about September, and her daily calls are now just weekly. I tried to call her more often, but every time they'd go straight to her messages, she told me later that she doesn't have her phone on while working. Doesn't explain why it does the same after work hours too. Anyway, she'll call me when she lands back in Puerto Rico. Almost two months of phone calls now is all I have. After I got home from work later that day, I realized that Emily still hadn't called me, she should have landed in Puerto Rico some time ago now. I tried calling but went straight to messages yet again. What the hell. She doesn't start back at work again until tomorrow. I got changed and hit the gym, we have our own setup in our garage to save money. The workout helps me to forget about the stresses of the day, to also forget about the niggling concerns I was now feeling with Emily. After showering, I check my phone, still no call from my wife. So, I started making dinner, finally relaxing in front of the TV to eat on my own as I've become accustomed to now. By the time I was ready for bed, I decided to call one last time, but again I was redirected through to her messaging service. What are you doing Emily? How could you forget to call your own husband once you've arrived back in another country? The following morning at work Emily finally called me, saying that she was busy getting ready for work yesterday, which is why she forgot to call. Still didn't explain why her phone was off most of the afternoon and evening, but I let it slide. We didn't talk for long, she told me that she was just taking a quick break and needed to get back to work. From that morning on, I only got a call from Emily once a week, always on the weekend, always on a Saturday morning. Whenever I tried to call her other than that, it would always go through to her messages, and she would use some random excuse, usually that she works late. Even our calls on Saturday mornings seemed more like a task for her, like she was checking in because she had to. If I had a niggling feeling over Christmas, it was growing into a real concern now. Emily's trip home at the end of February came and went, I was still left with that sense of something not being right between us, that Emily was just going through the motions once more when she was home. By the time Easter rolled around, I tried to put any concerns behind me as we again greeted each other at the airport. But during those five days that my wife was home, it only served to further the concerns I had. She had again seemed disconnected, almost distant a lot of the time. Our lovemaking was mundane at best if I'm being honest. While we were still best friends like we've always been, it's the romantic and physical side of our relationship that's been suffering the most. On the last day of her trip home, I decided to speak with her about what's been on my mind. Emily, has something been bothering you? It's just that we don't seem to be as close as we used to be. I can't explain it very well, but something's not right. No, nothing's bothering me. I haven't noticed anything different between us either, I'm still very happy to be married to the man I love. Why do you think that something's wrong? Emily asked. Because we're not connecting like we used to. You seem almost distant when you're home, like you'd rather be somewhere else. We rarely talk now when you're back overseas, you never return my calls, your phone is always off even when you're not working. Should I go on? John, I'm sorry but the work in Puerto Rico has been way harder than I ever imagined. The constant long hours, doing multiple shifts, and all the stress that goes with that. The little bit of time that I'm not working is spent sleeping or relaxing by the pool, trying to unwind as best I can. I'm sorry if I'm not calling you all the time, it makes me feel even more lonely when I do talk with you. Besides, what are we going to talk about? You always ask about my work, and I'm trying my best not to think about that. We don't have to talk about your work. I would love to be able to speak with my wife for more than just 30 minutes one day a week. That's all you've been giving me. Again, I'm sorry. I'll call more often in future, okay? I didn't realize you were that worried about it. I nodded my head at Emily, maybe I've been reading too much into all this. I'm hopeful that when her contract ends in June and she's home for good that we'll be able to get back to normal. 
I was glad to have gotten my concerns off my chest, and she left me on good terms. Even though she promised to call more often, we were soon back to the once a week phone calls. Emily must have even set a reminder on her phone for Saturday 10am to call me, it was now always that time exactly whenever she called. As June approached, I was glad that her contract was near its end, that we could have our life back again, and hopefully be ourselves once more. I was tired of being alone, I've missed her more than I could have imagined. Emily was due to fly home on Sunday morning, however, I was still expecting her to call me as usual on Saturday morning, but it never came. By 11am I tried calling her instead, yet again it went straight to her messages. She can't be possibly working on the Saturday right before she flies home. She'd even told me that her work contract officially ends yesterday, so what's going on? I tried calling her later on Saturday afternoon and once more in the evening, but I always ended the call when it went straight to messaging. I was starting to feel like I was the parent of a misbehaving child, overbearing and controlling. I had left the first message earlier today for her to call me, so why the hell has she got her phone off for not even checking her messages? Emily's behavior when it comes to keeping in touch with me has gotten to the point that I can't see any other reason than that she doesn't want to speak with me, or she's busy doing something else where she doesn't want me interrupting her. Maybe with someone else, that's my real fear. Early on Sunday morning I finally got a text from Emily, she once again apologized for not getting back to me sooner, and then let me know her flight times. She would be arriving back home in Manchester at 3pm, so I had the rest of the morning to myself before I'd needed to head to the airport to pick her up. I made sure the house was ready, then I went for a run before doing a workout in our makeshift gym. The whole time I was jogging and then working out, I couldn't get Emily out of my mind. My worry is that she's been having an affair while she's been in Puerto Rico. I couldn't see any other logical explanation for it, and being an engineer that is trained to solve problems by thinking logically, it's the only reason that made sense to me for how Emily's been acting for the best of the last year. It would explain why she started to contact me less and less, also seeming far more emotionally distant when she was home. It might also explain why her phone has been turned off so often when she's not meant to be at work, if she was with someone else, she wouldn't want me calling her. If she's been having an affair, it would all then make sense. But what do I say to her? Do I ask her straight out? What am I basing all this on, my gut feelings and a lack of phone calls? I've never been a petty person or one who likes to dive into gossip. Instead, I've always relied on facts, numbers, and reality. It's simply not me to start accusing her of something I have zero facts for, and what would it do to our marriage anyway if I did that? She'd know I don't trust her, and that would make things even worse if in fact she hadn't been sleeping with anyone else at all. No, I'll do what I do best, I'll bury my feelings and emotions, and just deal with what's in front of me. Emily will be home this afternoon, and maybe this will all be behind us, with our lives getting back to normal. Emily's greeting on her return seemed genuinely warm, I was happy she was finally home. We quickly started to settle back into married life, although I still felt that we weren't yet back to the relationship we had before she left for Puerto Rico a year ago now. It just didn't feel the same. I mean, Emily is still good to talk with, she can be funny and sincere, warm and loving. All the things you would want from a best friend, but from your wife you need something more. You need the emotional and sexual connection that a loving couple requires, and right now that's still lacking between us. My wife spent her first week back going to a few job interviews, the job she really wanted was at the main hospital in Manchester, Elia Hospital. By the end of the week, she gave me the good news, that she'd been successful. Being at a good sized hospital meant there was room for her to grow her career there, I was extremely happy for her. It also meant no more overseas contracts with her previous employer, which is a big part of the reason I was happy for her. By the end of August, I was feeling less worried about us. Emily has now been at her new job for almost 3 months, and seems to be enjoying it. While I still feel that we're not quite the same as we were prior to her 12 months away, I've come to the conclusion that maybe this is just how marriages go. That the passion and lust wane naturally over time, and maybe that's what's happened for us. Although I'd say it's been mainly one-sided, with Emily being the one that seems to have lost some of the passion for me, and not vice versa. The last few weeks have been especially telling, it's been almost like we are just two good friends sharing a house, not a young married couple in love, and I have no idea why. No, that's not true, I do have my suspicions. It's a Sunday morning in our home in early September, I've just made both of us breakfast and coffee. I've got a busy day planned, helping a friend out with his house renovations later this morning, followed by a site visit for one of my jobs later this afternoon. I almost never do work stuff on weekends, but this was unavoidable. Morning John, you've made breakfast already. What would I do without you? Emily stated as she kissed my cheek as she entered the kitchen and sat down to eat. Morning sweetheart, I've got a full day planned, I hope you don't get bored at home alone all day. 
I responded as I got stuck into the bacon I just cooked. Oh, I'm sure I can think of something to do. I might even go out for a while. Are you going to walk or catch an Uber? I replied while drinking my coffee. We currently only have the one vehicle, my Ford truck which I need today. I'll figure it out. What time do you think you'll be home? Emily asked me. Um, probably around 6 p.m., maybe 7. Were you planning on cooking something for dinner tonight? If not, I can always grab something on my way home. I asked her as I finished off my bacon. You better grab something, just in case I do go out for a while. By the way, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Emily replied. You're not pregnant, are you? I fired back with a smile. That used to be a running joke between us previously, whenever she said that she had something to tell me. No, I can't believe you still use that line. What I wanted to tell you is that there's a big healthcare convention at the Boston Convention Center in two weeks' time. Doctors Without Boundaries have asked me to be there, to help talk with other prospective young doctors about the benefits of contracting overseas with them. You know, to sell the dream as it were. But you don't work for them anymore, why would they ask you? I replied as I leaned back on the stool with my coffee. They always ask doctors who have completed contracts in other countries for them. It can't hurt, I might want to do contracts with them again sometime in the future, who knows. I thought that you were happy to be working at Elliot, so that you didn't have to do that contract work anymore, especially overseas. I replied, I was more than a little worried that she might be wanting to travel away again. I am happy with my job John, look, this is just me doing them a favor, nothing more. It's a two-day conference over the weekend, the booths run on both Saturday and Sunday. I'll be taking the train there, they'll pay to put me up at a nice hotel overnight with all meals included as well. So, it won't cost me anything, either. Emily answered. So, are you inviting me along? Is that what this is? I can go sightseeing around Boston while you work the booths. I responded before drinking the last of my coffee. No, they only offered accommodation and meals for one, sorry. But the hotel room will fit both of us, we don't even have to tell them. I'll pay for my own meals. I replied. That sounds nice, but I don't want to mess around with the booking, the hotel would want to charge them for a dual booking, not a single. It's only two days and the Saturday night, besides I'll be working most of it. We can go to Boston together some other time, okay? Emily answered. Alright, fine. At least I tried. Hey, I've got to get moving, Peter is expecting me over there in about 30 minutes. If you go out, call me and let me know where you're going, okay? I might be able to pick you up later perhaps. I responded, kissing her cheek before I started to put on my work boots. I'll be fine, I might not go out at all yet, I don't know. Bye sweetie. Emily replied as I left the kitchen heading out of the house. I was helping Peter out with some concreting today, amongst a few other things. We got the other stuff out of the way as we were still waiting for the overdue concrete truck to arrive, it was already 3 hours late as it got to midday. Peter then finally got a call that the concreter had some major truck issues and was cancelling all loads today, so that freed up most of my afternoon. I was planning on going to my job site at 4.30pm, but I called the client to see if he was available to go there any earlier. I was happy that he could indeed meet me there at 1pm, so I said my goodbyes to Peter and took off in my truck to get there to prepare for the client. What I expected may have taken up to 2 hours for us to sort through, took only 20 minutes. The client knew exactly what he wanted, which meant I didn't have to spend my time explaining all of the options. I checked my phone when we were done to see if Emily had texted me that she was going out, but I didn't have anything, which meant she'd still be at home. So, I headed home where I could shower and then spend the rest of Sunday afternoon relaxing with my gorgeous wife, maybe some sexy time is in order. When I entered the house, I called out to Emily that I was home as I started taking off my work boots before getting the carpet dirty. When I got no reply, I called out again as I made my way through the living room and kitchen to the laundry to throw my clothes into the washing machine, before I headed to the bathroom for my shower. I walked into our bedroom, but Emily wasn't there either, so I quickly looked out at our backyard too, still no Emily. I got into the shower, I was a little annoyed she didn't call to tell me where she was going like I asked her to. I swear it feels like only one of us is in a marriage sometimes, but whatever. As I got changed in the bedroom, throwing on my boxers and a t-shirt, I thought about Emily's sexy red teddy. I still haven't seen her wear it yet since I spotted it in her suitcase when she was home over Christmas. If she wasn't going to wear it, why did she buy it and bring it with her from Puerto Rico? And why would she have it in Puerto Rico anyway? She obviously took it with her when she went back there as well. This was just one more thing that I couldn't explain about my wife. Her underwear drawer is just above mine in our dresser, so I opened it to see if she still had the little red teddy or not. I had to dig a bit, but I found it, almost like it had been hidden at the bottom and the back of the drawer. 
When I pulled it out, something was off. It looks like it's been worn quite a number of times and washed too. A part of the trimming near the waist had a small tear. I also noticed that one of the buttons on the front was missing. It's clear that she's been wearing this. It looked brand new the last time I'd seen it in her suitcase. But wearing it when? She's never worn this for me. And just how do you get wear and tear on a sexy little teddy unless, well, unless you're wearing it while you're being ducked by someone? What other conclusion am I supposed to draw from this? It would explain why she hid it at the back of her drawer, maybe it's not meant for me. I put her teddy away where I'd found it, hiding it at the back like Emily had done. Where the hell is Emily anyway? I asked her to let me know where she was going if she went out. I grabbed my phone and called her, but once again it went straight to her messaging service. What the duck? Not this sheep again. I could do nothing but wait for her to return home now, so I decided to marinate some steaks for us to eat tonight. After that I hit the gym again, I needed to get these thoughts of Emily being unfaithful out of my head. At 5.30 I heard the front door close, as Emily came in and made her way straight to the bathroom to shower without calling out to me or saying anything. She must know I'm home, my truck is parked right out front. Again, strange behavior unless she has something to hide. When I heard the shower turn off, I went into the bedroom to say hello to her, and to be there to watch her getting changed. After all, she's still the sexiest woman I've ever known. She came out wearing a bathrobe, but didn't want to get changed in front of me, instead she sat down at the end of the bed and started doing her hair. So, why didn't you text me to tell me where you were going like I asked? What, are you my parents now? I'm sorry for caring about my wife, maybe I should care less, a bit more like you. I responded. I was just out with friends, okay. I didn't think you needed to know where I am every minute of the day. But why was your phone off? You can't use the excuse that you were working this time. It wasn't off, I must have set it to silent by accident. What's this all about John? I shook my head, the only thing I could say to answer that is that I think she's been cheating on me. But I don't have any proof for that accusation at all, so I said nothing. Did you at least, bring something home for dinner John? Nope. I've got some steaks marinating right now. I'm going to BBQ them in a minute, maybe you can help with the salad if you'd like. Sure, but you better go clean the BBQ first though. Off you go. Emily responded, trying to shoo me out of the bedroom. What, I missed the best view of the day. My beautiful wet naked wife. I answered her with a cheeky grin. It's nothing you haven't seen a thousand times before. Go on, go clean the BBQ. Emily insisted. Alright, but I have to use the bathroom first. I replied as I made my way into her ensuite bathroom. Hold on, I just need to grab my dirty clothes to put them in the laundry. Emily quickly replied as she grabbed her clothes she'd just been wearing out of the clothes hamper. As I stood there having a piss, wondering why Emily was worried about me seeing her naked right now, or leaving me alone with the clothes she'd just been out in. Again, what is she hiding? After using the bathroom, I made my way through to the laundry to grab the portable BBQ we had stored in there. I noticed the washing machine was already on, it only had the clothes both of us had been wearing today, hardly enough to make a load. It's almost like she's trying to wash away any evidence that her clothes may be keeping. Or maybe I'm just getting paranoid and imagining all of this. Over the next two weeks, not much changed in our relationship. It was going along, but that's about all I could really say for it. As much as I wanted to, I simply couldn't shake the feeling I have that something has been going on, that Emily has been hiding something. That her emotional and sexual attraction for me has waned ever since she went to Puerto Rico 15 months ago now. I was hoping everything would be good again once her contract ended, but it's been almost 4 months now, and we still haven't gotten back to normal. Now I'm going to be paranoid about her going to Boston on her own tomorrow, spending the weekend there. Will she be there with someone else? Am I being played here? Tonight is Friday night, and I decided I was going to give her the best ducking I could, to remind her of me while she's away over the weekend. But it wasn't to be, she pulled the my time of the month just started bit, and I didn't get to duck her at all, let alone anything else. I swear her time of the month only ended two weeks ago, but what can I do? Asked to see the bloody pads to prove it to me. I'd never do that, and she knows it. On Saturday morning I dropped her off at the train station before heading home. I was absolutely free this weekend, with no plans whatsoever. I walked into her bedroom, sitting on the end of the bed, unsure of what to do with myself. I'll do a workout later and go for a run, but what about the rest of the day? I looked over and noticed that Emily hadn't closed her underwear drawer properly in the dresser from when she was packing her overnight clothes earlier this morning. I got up to close it, but found myself wanting to look at her sexy red teddy once more, almost like it's a symbol of the concerns I have about my wife. It's something that I simply can't explain. I dug through her underwear to the back and bottom of the drawer, but I couldn't locate it. I kept looking, where is it? 
I pulled the drawer all the way out and placed it on the bed, going through all her clothes there to make sure I didn't miss it. Nope, it was definitely not there. Did she take it with her? Why would she do that? There was only one reason why she would, I didn't want to admit it to myself even though I knew the answer. I put her drawer back before checking her other clothes drawers, as well as the clothes hamper in the bathroom, not there. I checked the washing machine in the laundry, empty. I even checked our garbage to make sure she hadn't thrown it out, but no luck either. Duck it, she must have taken it with her. It's like all my suspicions up until now finally boiled over, I can't make excuses anymore or deny what I now think is obvious. My wife must be having an affair, I have no clue who with, but it must have started with someone she was working with from doctors without boundaries over in Puerto Rico. Of course, my wife will be in Boston with other staff from that NGO over the weekend. I bet whoever she had an affair with will be there too. Is she going to be wearing her sexy red teddy for him tonight, whoever he is? But what about since she's come home? It doesn't explain her still distant behavior, especially over the last month. My head was hurting, a mix of confusion and anger. Would Emily really do this to me, to us? We have it all, being high school sweethearts that dated throughout college together, then getting married and living together. Up until her contract in Puerto Rico, everything had been fantastic between us, why would she ever risk ruining what we have? We've been best friends and lovers for the past 10 years, but lately it seems like we're just housemates and nothing more. I don't know the answer, all I know is that the pragmatic side of me, the logical and fact-based side of me needed proof. I needed to be slapped in the face with her infidelity before I'd finally accept it or confront her about it. I threw on some jeans, dress shoes, a nice polo shirt and jacket, before I grabbed my keys and headed out the door. I'm going to Boston, I'm going to her convention, and I'm going to see for myself what's going on. As I entered the large convention area, I grabbed one of the brochures that also provided a floor layout of where you could find all of the vendors. I found where the booth is for doctors without boundaries and made my way over there. I'm not stupid enough to simply walk up to the booth where Emily is and expect to see anything untoward. No, I would hang back and mingle around other booths from a distance where I could keep an eye on her and who she was with and how they interacted. As some health rep for some medical device company started talking to me about their products, I could see Emily in the distance, she was sitting with another woman chatting at the back of the booth, while two guys, clearly also staff members, would engage with the public as they passed by. I ran out of questions for the guy that was talking with me after 20 minutes, so I moved on to another booth from where I could keep watching my wife. Over the next two hours I continued to watch her, the two guys had left a lot earlier, leaving Emily and her female co-worker to take over. I saw nothing strange, Emily was talking with people as they passed by the booth, occasionally she would spend more time with someone if they were genuinely interested in the NGO. I was getting bored of this, so I found one of the restaurants inside and grabbed a meal for lunch. As I circled back around to check on Emily, she was no longer there. Instead, the two male staff members were back and working the booth again. I wandered around trying to see if I could find my wife, then I thought about the food hall where I'd just been eating, it might be the best chance to find her. Maybe she was there to get some lunch like I'd just been. The third food joint that I walked past, I spotted her, sitting with the same female staff member she'd been working with all morning. I quickly turned and walked away, sitting at a food stall a distance away, but from where I could still watch her. As I sit here, I'm thinking about what I'm doing, and how it makes me feel like sheep right now. Am I honestly happy about spying on my wife like this? Following her around and watching her like some amateur sleuth. I should be better than this, Emily deserves better than this. What the duck am I doing here? I got up and wandered off, leaving the convention center to go sit out front trying to gather my thoughts. What am I hoping to find out by being here? That she's with her lover in the middle of a convention that she's working at. No, if she's going to be with him, it'd be tonight after she's done working. It'd be back in her hotel room where they could be alone together, without other people seeing them. But I don't even know which hotel she's staying at, let alone which room number. And what exactly would I even do if I did know? sit in the hotel lobby to catch her walking past. This whole trip feels like it's pointless, I'm probably never going to find out what I think is going on with Emily, this is just ridiculous. I got up, I was going to head for the parking garage where my truck is parked, but I ended up going back inside to check on Emily one last time, it's like I just couldn't let it go that easy. I found her hanging out back at the booth, she was chatting with the other woman again, the two guys were still there as well. I wondered if one of the guys is the one that she's been potentially having an affair with, I watched closely for how she interacted with them both. One was a bigger guy, fatter that is and hardly my wife's type. The other man is a bit older, tall and thin and is clearly going bald, again I don't see my wife being interested in him at all either. When she did speak with both of them, it all seemed very normal, just how people working together would interact. 
Maybe I'm just being paranoid, maybe there's nothing going on, and I'm just imagining things because our sex life has not been anywhere near as good as it used to be, and I'm looking to blame that on something or someone else. It's just gone 3pm now, the convention booth shut at 5. I figured I might as well wait until Emily finishes work to see where she goes, and who she goes with. In the meantime, I needed a beer, so I headed for the large bar I'd seen earlier near the food court. It was pretty busy already, all the regular tables had people sitting in them, so I grabbed a bar stool up at the end of the bar. There were three people standing beside me talking shop, they've obviously been working at one of the booths today. They were loud too, I was finding it hard to even enjoy my beer with them carrying on. Eventually they left as I ordered my second light beer, I'm driving after all as I don't intend to stay overnight here. After about 20 minutes, another two guys took up the seats at the bar right beside me. That's when I realized that they were the same two guys that Emily has been working with today. My first thought was that maybe Emily would be joining them in a moment, and she would find me sitting here. Then I figured that Emily and the other woman are probably working the booth until 5pm now, as they seem to be alternating shifts with the two guys now having a beer next to me. They started talking about work and then about someone they'd previously worked with, some guy who they both knew. I was zoning out from their conversation as it went on for a good 20 minutes, checking the time is almost 4pm now. As I took another mouthful of my beer, I wondered to myself if I should just leave after my beer. Emily seemed to be here doing exactly what she said she was doing, and I'm feeling like an asshole for doubting her. I've never previously been the jealous or suspicious type with Emily before she went to Puerto Rico, so why am I being like that now? The sexy red teddy came to mind, Emily always turning her phone off when not at work was another. Also, the fact that her sex life and intimacy have suffered too, but is that reason enough to suspect her of cheating on me? Really? As I finished my beer, I was about to stand up and leave when the guy beside me mentioned Emily to the other. Have you met Emily Walker before today? The great looking blonde in the booth. Did you spend any time over in Puerto Rico since last Christmas? The slightly bigger guy asked the other. No, I've never been to Puerto Rico. I was working in Guatemala more recently, Honduras before that. I've never met her before today, she is very attractive though, her husband's a very lucky man. Replied the older taller thinner guy. I was feeling somewhat good about myself, yes, I am a very lucky man. I don't know about her husband being so lucky, I was in Puerto Rico with her up until last Christmas. Have you worked with Ryan Knight before? He's one of the more senior doctors that's been with us now for a few years. He was a team lead over in Puerto Rico, he and Emily spent a lot of time together, and I mean a lot. Replied the bigger guy while chuckling a little. What? I almost turned to the guy to ask him what he meant, but remembered that I don't know these guys. What the duck though, they're talking about my wife and this doctor, Ryan Knight. Yeah, I know him. I worked with him earlier last year in Honduras, he seemed like a good guy, happily married with kids too. Did he really have a fling with Emily? Not a fling, I'd call it a torrid romance. They couldn't get enough of each other shortly after she started working with us last summer. She arrived looking all beautiful and innocent, like a flower ready to be plucked. She wanted to impress Ryan too, and I don't think he could help himself. From early on, every moment they weren't working, they'd be ducking like sex-crazed rabbits. You could hear them going at it day and night in the dorm-like apartments we were all housed in. He even switched out a roommate she had and moved in himself, something that's not meant to happen. Two married people of different sexes living together like that. He only got away with it because he was the boss. The bigger guy continued. I was dumbstruck, all of this time wondering whether something had been going on, and now this guy just spills it all out for me, I couldn't believe it. I felt numb. Wow, okay. So, did Ryan finally end it? Is he back home now in Chicago with his wife and kids? Well, I spoke with Emily just before, asked her if she's kept in touch with Ryan or not. I mean it was super clear that they were a couple back then, they both lived together, dined together, they were inseparable. It's not like the two of them were a secret or anything. But here's the interesting bit, she told me he's now working at Elliott Hospital with her in Manchester. He started there just a month ago, according to her. I think she probably helped him to get the job there too, but she'd never say that. Hold on, did he get divorced? Did he leave his wife and kids for Emily? The older balding guy asked. I asked her that, well if he's now divorced anyway. She said no, he's just working with her for a while, whatever that means. I bet Ryan has told his wife he's off on a contract overseas somewhere, meanwhile he's banging the hell out of the hottest young doctors in New Hampshire. He must have massive balls to pull that off, lying to his wife so he can be with Emily. To do that with the wife and kids at home, seriously that's a little ducked up. The balding thinner guy answered, and I had to agree with his point of view, it is ducked up. Emily has ducked up our marriage now too. 
You say that, but you haven't seen Emily sunning herself topless at the beach or by the pool in Puerto Rico. If you've seen her body and those tits, my god, even you might have second thoughts. The fatter guy replied. No, I couldn't live with myself if I ever did that to my family, no matter how gorgeous she is, it's just not worth it. And she's married too, so, she's now working and no doubt sleeping with Ryan again, and then what? She goes home to her husband afterwards. The older thinner guy replied back. Yeah, I know, sucks to be him. Well, don't mention any of this when she gets here after 5. It's really none of our business if she wants to duck around outside of her marriage. I bet Ryan will probably be here soon as well, there's no way he'd miss an opportunity to spend the night with her. I bet he'll be pounding her until the wee hours of the morning for sure. The bigger guy replied. Well, it'll be nice to catch up with Ryan again. Although, I can't say I'll have as much respect for him now. It's not a good thing what he's doing. I could never even think of doing that shit to my wife and kids. The balding guy answered. Oh, come on, not even for someone as hot as Emily. Man, I'd give my left nut to have just one night with her. The bigger replied while chuckling out aloud. But you're single. You don't have a wife and kids at home to think about. There's more to life than just sex, even if she's a 10 out of 10 like Emily. The balding guy answered. Fair enough, just remember, mom's the word when Emily or Ryan gets here, okay? Sure. I was still trying to pick my jaw up off the ground, hearing them talk about my cheating wife with her lover like that, I was still feeling like I'd just been sucker punched. It was all clear to me now, everything made sense. Even her recent behavior was explained, she's now ducking this Ryan guy again. The other Saturday, I bet she spent all day ducking him when she was out, that's why she never answered her phone, and wanted to shower straight away when she got home, and to wash her soiled clothes. She also didn't want me to see her naked because she probably had marks on her still from their duck session less than an hour earlier. My anger was at a boiling point, I wanted to grab the fatter guy, and ask him what else did he know. But instead, I tried my best to act casually as I got up and left the bar. I swear if someone had bumped into me on the way out, I probably would have slugged them. I went and sat down out front of the convention center again, it's now after 4.30pm. Did I want to wait around to see her with him? To see who this Ryan guy is? No, to me it doesn't really matter who he is, it's Emily I'm most angry with. I don't care if he's cheating on his wife, I really don't give a sheep. I only care that Emily is cheating on me. That's it. What makes me the angriest with Emily are the lies and deceit, not just the betrayal. If she fell in love with this guy shortly after arriving in Puerto Rico, why didn't she break up with me then? At least she should have had the courage to do it when she returned home next. Instead of pretending that we were still good, to have sex with me after that when she clearly no longer loved me, why? Now to help this guy get a job in our own hometown, where everyone knows us, to be continuing her affair right under my nose. It's that complete lack of respect for me, like she's rubbing it in my face, that's what I can't understand. Why would she do that? I've given her everything I could, we've always been best friends and lovers since high school. I've never so much as kissed another girl other than Emily, let alone have sex with someone else. And now she's flaunting her infidelity like she doesn't care for me at all. How did we get to this point? Only one thing remains here, do I need to see her with him with my own two eyes? To remove any doubt whatsoever? Maybe. I'm thinking of it as closure, seeing her being with another man that she's romantically and sexually involved with, it will make it clear to me once and for all, that our marriage is truly over. I tried to gather myself, it was hard. I still had thoughts and anger and frustrations and questions all swirling around inside my head. The main question was why? Why Emily, why did you want to cheat on me? It's after 5pm now, so I got up and made my way back inside as most people were leaving. I don't want to confront her yet, I just want to see her with him for myself, for closure. I made my way towards the bar, stopping and sitting at a cafe close by. From where I'm sitting, I can see the end of the bar where I was earlier. The two guys are still there along with Emily and the other woman now. There was now also a third man, a tall guy with nicely combed brown hair, who looked in good shape and dressed well. He was standing beside Emily, now he places his arm around her waist as they stand there chatting with the others. This must be Ryan, this is the guy my wife has been cheating on me with. Seeing my wife standing there with another man as he has his arm around her, claiming her for his own, it's hard to take. Up until today I thought that Emily only had love for me and me alone. Even with all my suspicions, I was hoping and praying that I was wrong. It's hard to explain this moment, to see her with him with my own eyes, she's broken my heart, and any trust I have for people all in one fell swoop. What do I do now? Do I go in there and confront her? Do I smash this guy in the face and tell my wife to duck off? I want to, so very much I want to go in there and let my anger fly. But no, I don't need assault charges added on top of the pain that she's already inflicting upon me. 
My pragmatic side tells me to not make any rash decisions while emotionally distraught, that I need to go home and calm down first. I have my proof now, I got what I came here for. I pulled out my phone, turning on the video as I zoomed in according them. As if on cue, Emily turned a little towards Ryan and kissed him on the lips, just a quick kiss, but it clearly showed what he meant to her. I pressed stop, then headed back to my car. It felt strange walking into her home, the one we've shared together for a number of years now. While I've been lonely here while Emily was in Puerto Rico, our home now felt different. It now served only as a reminder of what should have been, but what now isn't. It was going to be hard sleeping here tonight, knowing that my wife is getting ducked in a hotel room by her lover in Boston, while I lay here alone. Again, the only real question I had was why. Why Emily? I decided to head back out, to go to a bar or something, to get some dinner and maybe hang out having a few beers with my friends, I just didn't want to be alone. I didn't get home until 2am, I had no problem sleeping as well after having drank way too much during the night. The hangover in the morning seemed to compound my bad mood about my marriage. I needed to clear my head and figure out what I was going to do before Emily got home later this evening. One thing I knew for sure, our marriage wasn't going to continue like before, I wasn't going to pretend that I didn't know or that I would accept this. No, it's definitely the end, but what now? Do I pack my bags and move out? No, duck that. She's the one cheating, she can go and live with her boyfriend. He must be renting somewhere in town, he's even working with her now. How do you do that? Lie so blatantly to your wife about where you are. Does she even know that he's living in New Hampshire, working here? That's when I knew what to do. I opened up my laptop and went to the Doctors Without Boundaries website, looking to see if they had any details for him. They didn't, not publicly anyway, so I checked the popular employment websites, searching for Ryan Knight, Doctor, Chicago. I got a hit. When I went to his profile, it listed both his time in Honduras and Puerto Rico recently working as the team leader for Doctors Without Boundaries. I went to his contact details, he had that he lived in Chicago and provided an email, along with both his mobile and his home number. Bingo. I made myself a coffee and sat out in the backyard while I drank it. Do I really want to go through with this? I'm hurting right now for the destruction of my own marriage, and he helped cause that to happen. But his wife and kids aren't to blame, do I want to ruin their lives too? No, but his wife deserves to know. She should know the truth, besides, he doesn't get to ruin my life and walk away into the sunset with both my wife and his. I got up and went back inside, I called the home phone number listed on the employment site. Hello, Melissa speaking. Melissa Knight I replied. Yes, that's right. Hi Melissa, this is Kevin from Doctors Without Boundaries, would I be able to speak to your husband Ryan about an opportunity we have for him? I replied. I'm sorry, he's already working for you, he's in Costa Rica right now. That can be right, I don't have that on our database. I have that his most recent contract was in Puerto Rico earlier this year. Is that correct? I continued. Yes, that's right. But he recently left on a new contract to Costa Rico about a month ago now. Maybe you should call someone there to confirm things. Or you could ring my husband on his number, although reception is pretty bad down there, my calls almost never get through. Melissa responded. Is it? We've never had an issue with cell service in Central America before. Besides, I don't think we have any placements for Costa Rico, they have a really good healthcare system there. Could you do me a favor? Could you check your husband's flights to Costa Rico, and if you could give me the flight number? We pay for all the trips, so I'll be able to find that in our database and clear all of this up nice and quick. I responded. Um, yeah, sure. Just give me a moment, I'm not on my laptop right now. Ryan's wife replied. She took a minute or two to log into her laptop and their emails, before responding to me. This can't be right, I can't find any emails here for his flights, give me a moment, I'll check the flight booking website we use. Melissa continued. Thanks Melissa, this will make it a lot easier for me to relink everything in our database. I added as she typed away on her laptop. Okay, here it is, oh, that's strange. His flight was just one way from Chicago to Boston. He normally flies via Texas for his trips to Central America, with connecting flights to whichever country he's going to. I'm not sure why he flight to Boston, and there doesn't seem to be any other flights listed after that. Melissa responded. Really? We never book flights through Boston unless our contractors live in the Northeast. What's the flight number you have there, maybe I can check on my end to see what's happened. I continued. Melissa then read out the flight number, I pretended like I was entering it somewhere as she spoke. Um, I've got nothing in our database. He never came through us for that flight. Are you sure he's working on a contract for us? There's no other companies or NGOs that perhaps he's working for. I asked his wife. 
No, he told me the contract is with doctors without boundaries in Costa Rica for six months. I'm 100% sure of it. She responded. Well, I'm not sure what else to tell you, apart from that he's not currently working with us, and that we haven't paid for any flights, accommodation or wages for him recently either. Maybe if you check your bank statements, you might see details of another flight he paid for, or you might be able to see who's been paying his wages. I know this is probably a bit strange, but I don't have anything here for him at present, that's why I was calling to offer him some work. I responded. Hold on then, give me a moment. Melissa replied with a sigh. I could hear her typing away, if nothing else, she'd be suspicious of her husband now, she'd want to know the truth. This can't be right. What the hell is going on? Melissa spoke out aloud although it was clear she wasn't talking to me. He hasn't withdrawn from our bank account for the last month, how the hell is he paying for anything? Melissa again said out aloud. Maybe he got a cash advance before he left, or he has another bank account. I responded. No, we only have our shared account and there's no cash advances on here. Why would he open another account? I can't answer that. Have there been any deposits into your shared account recently? Surely, he's getting wages if he's away working somewhere. I asked her. Yes, there have been three deposits so far, the same amount each week. They're all bank transfers, from another bank it looks like. In the details it says here that it's from a bank in Manchester, New Hampshire. Why would he be transferring money into our account from a bank in New Hampshire? This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. She again asked out aloud. Well, that's like an hour's drive from Boston. I guess that explains the one-way flight to Boston then I'm assuming. Um, that's weird I continued, begging her to bite. What's weird? Melissa replied, taking my bait. Well, we only have one other doctor in our database that comes from Manchester, New Hampshire. I placed her with her last contract, it was in Puerto Rico working for your husband for Europe until June. What would he be doing in Manchester with her? Is he working there with her again I wonder? That would make a lot of sense if you're now receiving transfers for his wages from a bank there. I responded, the insinuation for his wife was clear, even if I played it calmly. That's impossible. What would he be doing working in New Hampshire with some woman who worked for him before? Why would he not tell me that? Why would he not tell me about the flights and the bank accounts? Oh my god. Melissa's voice trailed off. And there it is, she just realized the implications of this. She has just realized that her husband is cheating on her, lying to her. Who is she? This woman that lives in Manchester. What's her name? Melissa almost demanded. I can't give out personal information of our former employees. I'm so sorry. I responded as if I meant it. But she's a doctor, right? Melissa continued. Well, I only place contracts for doctors, that's what I do. I answered her. Manchester can't be that big, surely there can't be that many hospitals there. He has to be working at one of them. Melissa responded. I'm sorry Mrs. Knight, I'm not following. I added, keeping my charade going. Don't worry, I'll find out where he's working, what he's been up to. Is there anything else? I don't think my husband will be wanting a job with you at the moment. Melissa responded. Okay, I'm sorry about all of the confusion I've caused. I hope you get to the bottom of it. I replied. Oh, don't worry, I will. Melissa stated forcefully before ending the call. Well, that couldn't have gone any better, but why did I still feel like a big piece of sheep for doing it? I can't enjoy ruining her life, even if her husband and my wife are the real cause of it, I'm just helping her to find the truth. With that out of the way, I needed to figure out what to do about Emily. I decided I'm not moving out, that's what Emily has to do. I went into the garage and grabbed two of our suitcases, taking them into the bedroom, and started packing up her clothes. They were full before I finished, so I grabbed our last suitcase from the laundry, packing the rest of her clothes and all of her stiff from the bathroom. With that out of the way, I took all three suitcases to just inside the front door, leaving them there for when Emily gets home later tonight. With that task done, I hit the gym before going on a run. As I sit here eating my lunch, I'm trying to think about what I'll say to her, what she might say in response. I'm determined not to lose my temper, I don't want her to see how much pain I'm in right now. No, I'll have the courage to do what she should have done a year ago, I'll end it once and for all. I watch some sports on the TV to pass the time, it's almost 6pm now, and it won't be long before Emily is calling me to come and pick her up at the train station. That reminds me, I grabbed my phone and switched it off. Two can play this game. At 7.30pm I can hear a car stop out front and a door close, shortly followed by our front door opening and shutting. As Emily enters the living room where I'm sitting, I watch her stop and sigh. John, why is your phone off? You were meant to come and pick me up, I had to get an Uber home. And what's up with all our suitcases at the front door? Emily asked as she flopped down on the couch beside me. 
I'm so worn out, it's been a very busy and tiring weekend. I feel like I need a few days off to recover now. Emily continued after I hadn't said anything yet. Those suitcases are for you, they're full of all your clothes and stuff. I know exactly why you're so tired after last night. I know who you spent last night with. I know all about it. I replied calmly. John, what are you talking about? You're not making any sense. Emily replied with a twinge of concern in her voice. You can stop lying now Emily. It's over. You should have had the courage to end our marriage a year ago after you started cheating on me. From that point on we've been going through the motions, I didn't understand why, but now I do. I remained calm as I replied to her. What are you talking about? Cheating. What are you saying John? I love you. Emily replied, the pitch in her voice getting higher. I think she's starting to understand that it's all unraveling now. Yeah, right. You haven't loved me since Dr. Ryan Knight started ducking the hell out of you every day and night while you were in Puerto Rico. Like I said, I know all about it. Emily was silent, her eyes started to tear up as she eventually jumped up and ran into the bedroom, locking the door behind her. I'm annoyed, she doesn't even have the courage to admit it now that she's been caught. Maybe she's been lying for so long now that it's hard for her to admit what she's been doing. I stayed on the couch watching TV. I'm not going to talk with her, knocking on our bedroom door and asking her to come out. Duck that, she can come to me. This is all on her, she needs to own it. It's been an hour since Emily ran off into her bedroom, I decided I needed to eat, so I went into the kitchen to whip up something. As I sit at the kitchen bench eating my heated up leftover stir-fry noodles, I can hear our bedroom door open, followed by a red-eyed and still teary Emily. She walks into the kitchen and takes up a stool on the opposite side of our bench. John, can we talk? I need to say a few things. Emily said softly. Sure, go ahead, let's hear it. I replied while eating my noodles. First off, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt you, not in a million years. I never meant for any of this to happen. I really didn't. Emily offered sincerely. Yet, once it happened, you kept doing it, again and again and again. I calmly responded. I know, I feel terrible about it. I bet you didn't. I bet you love ducking him, that's why you kept doing it. You need to stop lying to me. Just be honest for once. I responded. Emily looked away from me, breaking eye contact. She then closed her eyes and sat silently for a number of seconds before looking back at me to speak. You're right, John. I do love having sex with him. I can't get enough, it's like I've been addicted to it. Every time I came home to you, all I could think about was getting back there with him, to be with him again. I hate that I feel that way. I hate what I've done to you. Emily admitted. So, I'll ask again, why didn't you just end our marriage back then once this has started? Why lie to me, pretending that we're happily married when all you wanted to do was to duck some other guy? Because, because I didn't want our marriage to be over. I've loved you since we were just teenagers. I can't imagine my life without you, I still can't. So, I kept telling myself I could end it with him, that I'm just getting it out of my system, that I'm just having some fun, and that I don't love him like I love you. I kept telling myself it would soon be over, and we'd go back to being happily married again. And yet, he now lives and works here too, and you've been ducking him again. That's hardly wanting it to be over or to be happily married to me. Hell, you even spent all of last night with him after I asked you if you wanted me to go with you over the weekend for us to enjoy the hotel room together. You straight up lied to me, you were planning on being with him the entire time. None of this is by accident, you've lied and schemed for well over a year now. I'm sorry, it's true. I only went to Boston so we could be together, it's been hard trying to find time for us to be alone. Well, I'm sorry if me being around has made it hard for you to duck someone else, Emily. You did find some time two weeks ago while I was out, didn't you? That's why you didn't want me to see you naked that day when you got home. You just finished getting ducked by him right before coming home to me. I added. Yes. I'm so sorry John, I really am. It's a bit late for that, don't you think? You just come home from arranging a weekend away with another guy, and all you gotta say is that you're sorry. Sorry for doing it, or sorry that you've been caught. I know nothing I say is probably going to make this any better, for what I've done. I do love you though John, more than anything. More than anything? You're joking, right? You've been ducking another guy for well over a year now, not wanting to have sex with me while giving him everything. And yet you sit here with a straight face and say that you love me more than anything. Do you know how full of sheep that sounds? I know. And I know you're hurting right now and that it's all because of me. I know you don't want to believe me right now, but I do love you John. Honestly, I do. My actions haven't shown that, I know. It doesn't matter if somewhere deep in that twisted thing you call a heart, you've convinced yourself that you still love me. You're just lying to yourself at this point. 
There's no love between us. You took care of that shortly after going to Puerto Rico. All the lies, the deceit, the betrayal, the pretending when you got home. I now know why your phone always went straight to messages when you weren't working, it's because you were busy getting ducked by him, wasn't it? You didn't even care enough to call me back or to want to speak with me afterwards. You only wanted him. Well, now you get to have him, as much as you want. I couldn't call you, I was so full of guilt, I just couldn't do it. I knew what I was doing was wrong, that I was hurting you, but I can't explain it, I couldn't stop. I didn't want to. Well, you should be happy now. You get to duck Magic Man Ryan whenever you want. You're now free to do whatever you want, I even packed your suitcases for you. See, I'm the good husband right to the very end. John, that's not what I want. I want you, I always have, and I always will. You're the only man I'll ever love, I swear it. Emily almost pleaded this time. Like I said before, it's way too late for that. If you honestly think I'd ever want to be with you after what you've done, you must have way less respect for me than the very little you've already shown. Do you think you can just say sorry and that you love me, and somehow that will make it all better? What the duck Emily? You've torn my heart out and trampled on it. Now you want to sit here and rub it in for good measure. Just take your suitcases and duck off. Our marriage is over, we're done. I hate you so much right now. I replied, finally getting emotional even though I tried my best not to. Emily's tears started to flow again as she got up and walked back towards our bedroom. I finished my noodles and opened a beer. I deserved one after all that. I walked back into her living room and sat down to continue watching the game on TV. I'm not sure what Emily's doing in the bedroom, none of her stuff is in there any longer. She's probably crying, feeling sorry for herself that the perfect little world she'd built for herself has finally come crashing down. 30 minutes later, Emily emerged from our bedroom, stopping in the living room to speak with me one last time. John, I know you hate me right now, that I deserve it, and you won't believe anything I say. But I need to say this anyway. From the moment we first started dating in high school, I knew you were the man of my dreams, the man I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Everything about you was so perfect, and I loved you more than I ever thought possible. Even in college while everyone else was having fun and sleeping around, it never crossed my mind that I'd want to be with anyone but you, and I knew you felt the same way too. Then when you asked me to marry you, and we moved in together, I thought my life couldn't get any better. Honestly, I was so happy. Everything I ever wanted had come true. I can't explain why I first slept with Ryan when I was away. I could blame it on being alone, on missing you, on whatever I want to blame it on. But I knew what I was doing, and I wanted it to happen. I knew what the consequences of that choice would be, but I've tried my best to bury that ever since, to convince myself that I'd never have to face up to it. I know, that was stupid, but I was so afraid of losing you, of not having you in my life or by my side. I think I'd become too complacent about our relationship, that you'd always be there for me, that's the only possible reason I can think of for why I let this happen. I know I've ended our marriage with this, deep down I always knew this is what would happen. If I could take it all back and never go to Puerto Rico to begin with, I would. But that's just fantasy, I'm so sorry for hurting you. If you believe only one thing I've said, please believe that. Hurting you was the last thing I ever wanted. I hope that one day, you can forgive me. I hope that you can move on with your life and be happy again. Goodbye John. With that, Emily turned and walked out to the front door, taking the handles of her suitcases, and dragging them outside where I could hear a car waiting for her. She didn't say where she was going, if she was going to stay with him or not, and I didn't care. I feel that her little speech is meant more for her than for me. That in some way she's trying to justify what she did in her own mind, so that she can go on living with herself after what she did. That she'd want to leave with memories of what we used to be, not what we became. And to leave me with kind words, not angry ones. But I truly believe that actions speak louder than words, and her actions have already said more than enough. To say that the next few weeks were difficult for me would be a gross understatement, I was even finding it hard to concentrate at work. It was almost impossible for me to not think about Emily and what she did to me. After a few weeks I finally contacted a divorce lawyer and started the process. I figured it was better to get it over with than to drag this out. The other issue is the house we shared, although we're only renting, we've been living here together for a number of years now. It reminds me of her, everything reminds me of her. Our lease was expiring in two months time, and I decided to move out, to start over again. By the time I moved into my new apartment, I was hoping that this would be a new beginning, to start moving on from Emily, to finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. My lawyer contacted me, the divorce papers were ready to be served, and I was asked for Emily's address for which I had no idea. I advised him where she works, he should be able to find her at the hospital. I got a call later that day from my lawyer, he told me there's been complications. 
It turns out that Emily no longer works at the hospital. She was fired after Dr. Ryan Knight's wife Melissa lodged divorce proceedings against her husband. He was served at the hospital, and Dr. Emily Walker was named in the court filings, along with their place of employment. The hospital administrator fired both Emily and Ryan, Emily for referring Ryan to them without notifying them of her personal relationship, and Ryan for not disclosing his relationship with Emily either. Basically, the hospital washed their hands of both of them. So, where is she? How do I get my lawyer to serve her the divorce papers? I gave them her parents' address and contact details in Florida, maybe he could contact them to find out. Then there's also Melissa, Ryan's wife. Maybe she knows where her husband is living, and if he's now living with Emily. I called her home phone number, this time I wasn't going to deceive her. Hello, Melissa speaking. Hi Melissa, you don't know me, but we've spoken before. The last time we talked, I told you my name was Kevin from Doctors Without Boundaries. Yes, I remember, and thank you, I guess. I might never have known what was going on with my husband otherwise. You're welcome. My real name is John, John Walker. I've been married to Dr. Emily Walker, the woman that's been having an affair with your husband. Yes, I know who she is. Are you two still married? Well, that's why I'm calling you. I was hoping you could help me this time. I asked her. I'll help if I can. Melissa replied. Both Emily and Ryan were fired by Elliott Hospital, due to you filing for divorce and naming them as their employers. They fired them for not disclosing their personal relationship, apparently. Yes, I know. I spoke with the hospital administrator, I pretty much demanded that she should take action, or I'd drag them through the mud too for allowing married staff to hire their lovers with the hospital's blessings. She didn't want any part of it. Melissa replied. Well done. Melissa, the reason I'm calling is that my lawyer is trying to serve Emily with our divorce papers, but I don't know where she's living or where she works, now that she's been fired. I was wondering if you knew where Ryan is living, if Emily is perhaps living with him. I know where Ryan is, he's living back here in Chicago, staying in an apartment not far from our house. He said he wants to be close to his kids, I'm not sure why though. He spent most of their lives so far living and working overseas, and I don't think he'll hang around for too long. I don't know if he's dragged Emily here with him, I'm not sure. Melissa told me. Can I get his address and number from you? Maybe my lawyer can contact him and find out if my wife, I mean my ex-wife, is living with him. I answered. It's hard, isn't it? To stop thinking of her as your wife. It's the same for me. Be strong though John, we'll both get through it in the end. I'll text you his details after our call. Thanks Melissa. I hope you're doing okay, too. I can't imagine how hard this would be family and I had kids as well. It must be tough on them too. They're actually not doing too badly. I think that's because their father has barely been in their lives so far, there's not much difference now to what they're already used to. That's about the only silver lining. Yeah. Well, I hope you're screwing him for every dime he's got. I added. Oh, yeah. My divorce lawyer, she's an absolute witch and I love her. She's really expensive too, so I'm lucky that Ryan's paying for her with all that contracting money he's made. I'm getting the kids, the house, the car, and 50% of his wages for at least the next 12 years, until our kids turn 18. He deserves everything that's coming to him. Yeah, no doubt. Emily and I don't have much to fight over, we were just starting out and don't have any kids or house. It should be pretty straightforward for us. Well, it's better to be starting over when you don't already have kids together. I don't know what I'm going to do, who wants to be with a 30-year-old divorced mother of two. I even gave up my career to look after the kids. I'm going to have to dust off my resume and go back to work soon. Melissa answered with a small chuckle at the end. I'm sure you'll be fine. Thanks again for sending his details through. Hopefully I'll be able to have her served and end this. I replied. Okay, goodbye John. Look after yourself. Melissa replied as we ended the call. Ryan's wife did send me his address, and my lawyer got someone to check with him if Emily was living there also, but it turns out that they're no longer together, according to Ryan, anyway. He advised that she'd taken a new contract with doctors without boundaries, that my lawyer should contact them about her whereabouts. It turns out Emily is on a six-month contract in Honduras now, and my lawyer advised he has no way of having her served until she returns to the United States. I wasn't happy that this will drag out even longer. But shortly after, and to my surprise, Emily had already engaged with a divorce lawyer, serving me at home. It was straightforward, she wasn't asking for anything. Six months later and we are now officially divorced. I haven't seen or heard from Emily during that time, and I don't really expect to in the future. I'd like to say that my life is wonderful now, but I'd be lying. My job's fine, my family's fine, and my friends are good. 
It's just been hard when it feels like I've lost the other half of myself, my best friend, my only lover. I'm told it'll get easier over time, that I'll find someone new to be with. But I'm not so sure, what I had with Emily was everything I ever wanted. I don't know if I can ever truly trust someone again after what she did to me. Sometimes there are no happy endings, just the end of what was. Then with those involved trying to deal with it, trying to move on with their lives. I hope everyone's right, that this will get better with every passing day. But right now, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like I'm just coping with it, burying the hurt as far down as I can. I still don't understand why she did it, maybe I never will. We have reached the end of today's story, my dear viewers. I know you are all smart so why do you think she did it? Drop a comment, and let's see who will come up with the craziest, most unhinged reason why. Get creative and I'll see you in the next video.